Hey all you action figure enthusiasts out there, JC here with another T9 News video. And as you can see, I'm back in the office, back from New York City, covering the New York Toy Fair. It was a hectic weekend, but overall I thought fairly exciting. There were a few disappointments, a few companies that didn't have as much as I was hoping for. But overall, you know, I saw some pretty exciting stuff. I think Hasbro definitely shined this year, as they often do with Marvel Legends and Transformers. And I talked about a lot of that stuff in a previous video. I had Shardimus Prime on with me, and we were discussing that stuff. So for today, I'm not really going to focus on anything I've already talked about here recently. But I do have a few additional tidbits of news from Toy that come outside of Toy Fair. And that's mostly in regards to Jurassic Park Mattel stuff. And then I'm going to touch upon a few things that um, we saw after I did the last video with Shardimus. So, um, first of all, getting into the news. Well, actually, before I get into any news, I just my normal update for you guys. We continue to run contests over on both the Toy News International and Marvelous News message boards. Two different contests where we're giving away $100 store credit for either your choice of Big Bad Toy Store or Megalopolis Toys. Essentially $100 worth of free toys. Now, the contest that we've been doing on Toy News International, the most recent one that I talked about previously, that came to an end earlier this week. We announced the winner. They've claimed their prize. If you didn't win, though, we've launched a new contest. So you've got uh, another two weeks where you'll have another chance to win. If you haven't already gone over there, signed up, participated, then I highly recommend you do. The contest on Marvelous News, which, again, is a second contest. So conceivably, if you won both contests, you could win up to $200 worth of store credit. That one, that one ends at the end of this week but again once that ends we'll do another one that's the great thing about these contests is in the overall scheme of things it's not like there's hundreds of thousands of people participating over there i wish there was but there's not so if you keep participating if you keep you know joining in the discussions over there talking about the things that i i would imagine since you're watching this video interest you then your chances of winning will significantly increase over time. So if you don't win this time, there's a good chance you will win the next time. Now, if you're under the age of 18, please do get your parents' permission. You do have to sign up for the message boards, which takes like three minutes. As long as you have a valid email, you know, you, like I said, it's not a difficult process. Um, you can post pictures, you can upload your own images to our, our message boards. You don't have to have like an image hosting place or anything. You can do it directly there if you wanna show off your customers Systems, if you want to show off your your toy photography or what have you, you know, you can do all of that there. Anything you can do on Facebook or Instagram, you can do on those message boards. And again, you get entered for a chance to win a free toy. Okay, so let's get into the news. Let's get into uh, the couple of uh, additional tidbits outside of Toy Fair. Um, and this, again, comes from Jurassic World and Mattel's stuff. And it's really kind of a follow-up. I talked about this uh, toy, the, the Barakasaurus. I think that's how you pronounce it. Again, I'm, I'm not a dinosaur excerpt, expert, but Barakasaurus. Uh, yeah. Anyway, the one with the really long neck, um, really going to be a big giant toy. It was first teased at San Diego Comic Con the other week when I talked. I think it was last week when I talked about it. I, I mentioned how it's been confirmed that it will be released as a Target store exclusive. However, we had not actually seen the toy itself. And so since then, an image has been released. So they did not have this on hand at Toy Fair this year because it's a retail exclusive. They didn't bring it and show it off to, to the media. But um, Brit Shots, that's what she goes by on Instagram. She released this image on her Instagram page. She works on the Jurassic Park team. I will put a link to her Instagram page if you want to check her out. But she uh, released this image of the toy. And you can see that this thing is definitely huge. It seems to be in almost perfect scale with the four-inch figure that they've done even the jeep uh the background's not included you know but but the toy itself you can see is is pretty damn huge now i don't have any kind of price point information at this time she says it's going to be released towards the end of the year i'm guessing they're probably aiming towards the holiday season since this is is likely going to be a little bit more on the expensive side and it's going to stand two feet tall and almost three feet long so again this thing is a pretty damn big toy and if you've been wanting a, a scale size a correctly scale size dinosaur or brachiosaurus i think you'll want to check this out they also say for those of you who are overseas who don't have access to target that they are looking for ways to get this to everybody who wants one so again no deep specific details but they are apparently trying to 
find other ways to get this out to you folks who don't live in the United States. Now, the other bit of Jurassic World news I wanted to share with you, a lot of you have been asking me um, leading up to Toy Fair to try and find out what's going on with those six-inch Jurassic World figures that they first showed off at San Diego Comic-Con. Those figures were not on display at, at Toy Fair this year, and the folks that I asked really had no information. Um, that's kind of one of the things that's annoying about Mattel is they don't usually bring their brand team uh, managers and stuff like Hasbro does, where you can ask them specific questions. People who actually know really know the product. You get people who just basically have been given clipboards with certain information, and if it's not on the clipboard, they really don't have know anything about about the product that they're showing off. So, nevertheless, uh, Brit Shots came through again. I reached out to her on Instagram and asked her about those figures since I couldn't get any information uh, directly from Toy Fair. And while I don't have a lot of specific details, she does confirm for me those figures are still coming they have not been canceled the the three figures they showed at, at san diego comic-con just to recap were the owen figure chris pratt the malcolm figure based on jeff goldblum and then they're doing also a six inch scale a blue dinosaur to to round out the three and again those figures are coming she said more details should be released towards the summertime so i'm guessing around san diego comic-con Maybe these are going to be store exclusives. That's just a total guess on my part. But what I can tell you is uh, they, those figures are definitely coming. We got some exciting news from Super 7 this week that they announced that the Snake Mountain playset for their Masters of the Universe Classic line will be going up for pre-order in May. And the cost of this is going to be 600 bucks, so it is a hefty price tag. It's about $100 more than Hasbro's sale barge that they did on HasLab. And they are going to be initiating a payment plan where you can essentially stretch the payments out over six months so you don't have to take the hit up front all at once. But again, the pre-order for this thing, we saw it. They had it on display at San Diego Comic-Con. Mattel originally showed it off a couple years at San Diego, and then they essentially shelved the project. But Super 7 brought it back, so they had the, the thing on display. They released this teaser image on their social media, but you know these other images are from the set that they had on display at uh, San Diego Comic-Con. Now, I don't really have any other details. I assume things like the throne and the table that they had with it will be included. I certainly hope so for the 600 bucks. It would be nice maybe even if they threw in some kind of exclusive figure. But right now, all I can tell you is it is coming. It is going to be up for pre-order in May. That It's going to cost 600 bucks. You know, for me, you know, and this was another discussion we had going on over on the 20s International Message Boards is, yeah, the 600 bucks is expensive. Um, and like, I, I probably will not get this just in all, to be upfront and honest. I don't have the space. I didn't get the sail barge. I didn't get Hasbro sail barge. I think these things are awesome looking. I think they're really cool. And it, it, it's not even so much the money. I could probably put the money together. It's just, I have nowhere to put these things. So why pay? Why pay 500 bucks for a sail barge where I would have no place to put it? Why pay 600 bucks for a Snake Mountain playset where I have no place to put it? I mean, I could set it out on my kitchen table for a little while, but my wife would get pretty annoyed with it after you know a short period of time, and then I'd have to pack it up and it would sit and collect dust somewhere. So it's just for me, I just don't have that kind of space to really display these large uh, pieces, even though I think they're awesome. I love to see it when companies do these things, but you know, just to be completely honest, I won't be getting either one. Uh, the Snake Mountain, but if I had to choose, if I had to choose between the Sail Barge, even though it's $100 less than, than the Snake Mountain playset, I would probably go with the Snake Mountain playset. And it's not, I'm actually more of a Star Wars fan than I am a Masters of the Universe fan. But for me, from my perspective, I think as a display piece, the Snake Mountain uh, playset works better you know I, I i've mentioned this before with the sail barge the sail barge is so scene specific that you're limited to the kind of characters out of all the hundreds of hundreds of star wars figures that have been made over the years um you know the jabba crew is is a very small portion of that so the sail barge is so scene specific to one scene that appeared in one movie that it's just I, I don't feel like it's a very good display piece so even if i could find some place to put it it would just be very limited on what i what kind of figures i could put on it whereas with the snake mountain you could put uh, you know all your various you know bad guys and good guys fighting each other and it just makes for a much better display piece in my opinion the only thing that i would 
just no matter what I would find space for it is if Hasbro did a, a good looking Death Star playset. If Hasbro ever does that, which I, I hound them about this on a regular basis, I don't care. I will find the place. I, you know, my wife can yell at me if it's on the kitchen table. I don't know, but I will find a place if they ever do a Death Star playset. But that's probably the only kind of playset of this, this magnitude that I would, would be willing to, to buy just because of, of the space constraints that I have. Okay, now for just a few uh, Toy Fair roundups. So um, when I did my last video with Shardimus, we had not yet gone to the Mattel showroom. So it definitely looks like DC Multiverse is coming to an end at, um, in 2019. This is the final year for the line. So they only had a few things that they showed off. They really didn't even have like stuff that they showed at San Diego Comic-Con. I assume that stuff is coming still. Uh, again, the people there really just had no information in regards to any of that. But, but what they had on display here at, at Toy Fair was uh, just a couple of figures. Uh, Poison Ivy and Riddler, basically a few Batman figures. And then what people have been calling Michael Keaton Batman and, and Joker. But the fact is, is this Batman figure is not really supposed to look like Michael Keaton. It is more of a tribute to the old Toy Biz four inch figure that was done in uh, conjunction with the uh, original Michael Keaton Batman movie. But of course, back then when they did toys, movie tie in toys, they really looked nothing like the actors or anything like that. They didn't have that kind of sculpting detail. So if you ever had or still have, I still have mine, uh, the original Toy Biz one, you knew it looked nothing like Michael Keaton. You knew it was supposed to be, that's what it was supposed to be based on, but it didn't look anything like Michael Keaton. Same thing with the Joker figure they did for that line. You knew it was supposed to be kind of the, the Joker from, from the movie, but it looked nothing like Jack Nicholson. And so that's what both of these figures are paying tribute to. Not So not specifically to the characters in the movie, but to those old uh, movie action figures that Toy Biz did um, back in the day. Now, whether you like that or not, I don't know. Um, I think probably you would have rather had an actual Michael Keaton figure, but probably some likeness rights were at play. Uh, NECA got it, obviously, a while ago when they did theirs. Nobody's been able to really be able to get Jack Nicholson. I think the only one that's ever given us a Jack Nicholson uh, Joker figure is Hot Toys, and I don't know how they did it, but nobody really since has been able to do it. Maybe McFarlane can pull a rabbit out of the hat and, and do something like that for the 6-inch collectors, but... We'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, moving on, moving on. So um, that's really it as far as Mattel offering. So uh, McFarlane was another one where um, we I had seen what they had in the showroom, but we hadn't actually talked to Todd at that point. Hopefully you have caught Shardimus Prime's interview with Todd McFarlane. He had it up on his channel, I think, two days ago. I will put a link to that. If you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend you go watch it. But essentially, you know, he he continues to show real excitement for this line. I th you know I th I think he's like a kid in a toy store with this. You know, it's like you know he's a comic book artist. I mean, that's something that really has never happened before. Is a comic book artist like uh, the caliber of Todd McFarlane being put in charge of a major comic book line? Now you might say, well, he's got Spawn. He, he you know, and frankly, he hasn't done much with Spawn, especially recently. He, you know, his Spawn figures have never been known for articulation, and all that is true all that is 100 true but but we've never seen mcfarland do real articulation until the fort light fortnight line you know mcfarland yes has been hesitant he is the artist first and foremost you know he's had a hard time grasping why people want these horrible uh, cut lines in their action figures that takes away from the artistic value of it but I think he's finally realized that, you know, if he wants his action figures to be competitive in today's market, he's got to make the articulation part happen. And they've been doing that with the Fortnite. They say they're going to do the same thing with the DC. They say they're going to do the same thing with the Mortal Kombat. They, you know, pretty much everything going forward where it's warranted, I think you're going to see that added articulation. So, and yes, that means Spawn too. We, we talked about Spawn a bit, and I think we could definitely see down the road some new spawn figures with that Fortnite type of articulation especially as the mo his movie his new spawn movie gets closer to getting released you know i definitely think you'll you'll see some new spawn toys from him so um, if you're a spawn fan i think you have something to be excited about as well this is really you know it's a game changer for mcfarland i think you know mcfarland is was the pie i mean 
some of you like to tear into McFarland toys and, and Todd himself. And I understand why I understand the frustration with the articulation. But the truth is, is that, that there probably would not be a NECA toys. There probably wouldn't be a Mezco if there wasn't McFarland toys. Hell, there might not even be Marvel legends if it wasn't for McFarland. He's really the one that pioneered the adult collector market here in this country. He is really the one that demonstrated that it could be successful. And yes, he has shifted over the years. He has shifted his focus to other things that have helped him get into uh, the larger retailers like the Walmarts and the Targets. He's done a much better job, I think, and this is just my opinion, but I think he's done a much better job of creating those distribution channels into those large retailers than, say, a NECA Toys, which is just now starting to try and do that. You're just now starting to see their products get into places like Target and stuff. But McFarland's already got a good foothold with that, and that gives him an advantage here. Um, you know, you've got to put out sometimes you know in this in this industry you've got to put out the stuff that you and i might not like so that you can also get the stuff out that you and i will like because you can make great looking action figures until you're blue in the face but if you can't get them out to retail if you can't convince the retailers to carry them it really doesn't matter and so i think mcfarland over the years has done a great job with that and i am really excited for what they've got in store for us in 2020 i think you know this year is going to be a little bit slow but i think starting in 2020 we're going to really start to see some exciting things i mean for your dc comic fan it's been several years since i think you've really had anything to be excited about and you know that's not to slant that mattel hasn't put out a few good figures you know dc collectibles has cranked out some good stuff here and there but overall you know i think dc fans have been living more with disappointment than with excitement in, in recent years and i think that's about to change starting in 2020 um we'll have to wait and see i you know i can't sit here and promise 100 percent, but i really do think that we're going to see some exciting things so i'm excited for that hopefully you guys are excited for that you know, McFarlane style DC figures is certainly a possibility. Uh, DC figures with McFarlane art on them, maybe even things like mini cards or mini comics. Um, it, basically, Todd said that anything is is game, you know, that Warner Brothers is open to him presenting ideas for pretty much anything. So, and again, you've got this this legendary comic book artist in charge of this line. And I just think that that is going to, you know, now that they've seemed to have solved the articulation problem which was their one big hang up i think we are going to you know just see some great things okay so that I, I think i'm gonna leave it there for today um i did for you marvel legend fans um i have done a full recap of everything that was revealed over on marvelous news it's a written recap i will probably do a video recap as well later this week so if you want to just wait for that you can but i'll put a link to the written ones uh where it, I, I go over everything that's been announced what essentially what we know up until this point with images and, and then even some speculation as well so um head over and check that out and again i probably will do a video later this week kind of talking on that but that's really going to uh, need its own video in its entirety to cover everything that, that that's been announced for marvel legends but again i'd love to hear your thoughts on everything that's been shown at, at toy fair what were, what are you excited about what were you disappointed about uh, let me know in the comments section Head over to the Toy News International message boards. Let us know there so you can be entered for the contest. And until next time, guys, you know, subscribe to the channel. I am less than 500 away from 50,000. So um, definitely going to do something special when I hit the 50,000 mark here for subscribers. I appreciate all your support here and like the video. And until next time, guys, I will catch you later.